Hey, Vinyl Community, Brian again, Gibson A9 on YouTube. Um, back again for another installment of our video series for my Progressive Rock collection. So, I've uh, been getting a lot of good comments from folks. Um, I'm delighted. I'm up to over 70 subscribers. That's pretty cool. On my way to 100. Uh, I've been enjoying the... the uh, Brett and some of the other guys that have reached 100 subscribers and they have some of the contests that they've done. I'll have to film a, con a couple contest entries. Uh, Brett's has really done well uh, with, he wants you to post uh, albums that have the last song that's really epic or coolest last song entry. So I'll have to do something like that. Sounds like a fun idea for a video. So Hopefully when I get to 100, when and if I get to 100 subscribers, I'll, I'll come up with some kind of a cool idea like that. So, Anyway, we're, we're, we are working our way through uh, the L's today. Uh, L's, and actually didn't have all that many L's, but I've got a ridiculous number of M's, so I'm going to break it up. We're going to do the L's and maybe about half of the M's today. So let's get looking at some more progressive rock, shall we? First one up would be uh, Greg Lake's first solo album. Greg Lake, of course, being the lead singer from the first lead singer of King Crimson from their first two albums, um, and then later he left there to form Emerson Lake and Palmer. Um, wonderful, wonderful prog voice, if not one of the all-time classic progressive rock voices. Um, I was never really big on these solo albums. They kind of came out in, the, I guess, the '80s or. Uh, early 80s, yeah, this is 81. His second album is called uh, Maneuvers, I believe. It's got a white cover. I saw a copy of it last week and I was going to pick it up just for completeness sake. Um, I didn't. It was kind of pricey. And uh, this has got a song on here called Nuclear Attack. I think it's the first, uh, sorry about the glare. Nuclear Attack. I think I remember that one a bit, but... It's really different. It's not. It's not progressive like you know the early ELP stuff was or early Crimson was. Um, but you know you really can't blame him coming out in the 80s. It was things were more poppy then anyway. So, and Greg of course was more known for his little guitar ballads more so than the progier side of ELP. So that's the first one. Next one. I just bought this today actually. Never really heard this, but I've seen it for sale in the prog section of local store. This is called Marscape is the name of the record. And if I can get closer there, it says, uh, by Jack Lancaster and Robin Lumley. Um, but, you know, you read the back cover, and this is a promo copy there. Um, it's got, you know, soprano, alto, tenor saxophones, flutes, um, piano, harmonium, Moog synthesizer, auto harp, ARP and Hammond organ, so you know you know it's probably pretty proggy, but apparently this is like an early rendition of Brand X, the same guys that formed Brand X, um, drummer Philip Collins and the guys um, made this. It's kind of a all instrumental concept album about Mars, so uh, I'm going to be interested in giving that a spin. That's from '76, so I'm not an expert on Brand X and when they came out, but apparently it was maybe late '70s after that, so. Next one, I really love this. This is a this is an Italian progressive rock classic. Uh, one of the big three Italian prog groups was Le Orme. Uh, PFM, Le Orme, and Banco were uh, were probably the three greatest Italian prog groups. And this is Contrapunti. Um, this is a reissue of Contrapunti. From originally, this was released in '74, and this reissue. Um, is from 2011, but this is just fabulous, fabulous keyboard-oriented progressive rock. Um, if you like Emerson, Lake, and Palmer and the keyboards in Yes, um, this will really float your boat. Contrapunti by Leorme. There's a lot of other great Leorme albums that I'd like to get, but that's the only one I've even be, been able to get so far, even on reissue. Next one, this is not really prog, I should say. This is maybe more psych or psych rock maybe but lighthouse one fine morning it's a cool album cover some people will usually say that roger dean made this album cover i don't believe he did i think it's kind of in his style but that's not i don't think that's roger dean however roger dean did do a cover for lighthouse 
uh, which I think is why I've put Lighthouse in here. This is a great Roger Dean cover that he did for Lighthouse, uh, Best of Lighthouse. Got this kind of a pod, you know, pod looking lighthouse sticking up out of the water. Kind of the same thing, front and back, just different colors, but, uh, well, he was into the whole rockscape thing, wasn't he? Roger must have, uh, I don't know, he goes through phases, I guess, but I love that album cover. That's just, I saw that and I said, okay, I'm a Roger Dean freak, so I had to buy that. Next one up would be Carrie Livgren. Carrie Livgren, of course, um, the very first album in this entire video series was A.D., which was a group that Kerry Livgren formed uh, after he left Kansas. Kerry Livgren, of course, was the sort of mastermind behind all the progressive rock tendencies of, whoo, of Kansas. Um, the more rock and rolly songs were more Steve Walsh, the lead singer, influenced, but uh, Kerry put out some great, um, great prog classics. This is actually uh, a lot closer to being proggy than, uh, or more progressive, I should say, than A.D. was. This came out in um, 1980, and one of you guys, I think maybe Rob Panix or one of you guys pointed out correctly that um, Ronnie James Dio actually sings on this album. Uh, Barry Moore Barlow plays drums on this album. Uh, Phil Ehart, uh, the drummer for Kansas, playing on here as well. So, uh, but yeah, this is a 1980 effort from Kerry Livgren. Seeds of Change. All right, next one. Uh, again, this is. Uh, I have to take this out. Roger Dean's really coming through for us today in this video. John Lodge of the Moody Blues, bass player for the Moody Blues. Um, Natural Avenues. Natural Avenue. Look at the look at the Roger Dean. Uh, isn't that incredible? His these fonts that he came up with. That's just so uh, kind of the. If you're a progressive rock band, he's the guy you want doing your cover. But that's just a that's a great album cover. It was I think a photograph that he superimposed these floating staircases on. Uh, just a great, great album cover. John's looking a little fruity there in his video, but uh, um, John was actually a really good bass player. I've gotten my bass out and said, "Hey, I'm going to play along with some moody blues." And uh, there's some challenging bass lines in in some of those songs, like just a singer in a rock and roll band and some songs like that so um, see if I can get this guy back in here John Lodge Natural Avenue from about 77 was when that came out okay the next couple are maybe you could consider them progressive metal um, I'm really not so much into in the progressive metal side of things although a lot of people are um, so this is a group called Magnum, and I kind of actually just bought these for the album. You know, the album covers were intriguing, and they really looked, uh, and they were cheap at the time. This is a promo copy. Um, this is actually on Jet Records, like like ELO. Um, not sure what year. I think this was the earlier one, but a Kingdom of Madness is that album. And this one, uh, this is actually really good. This is kind of epic proggy sounding with heavier guitars, but uh, Chase the Dragon by Magnum, and that almost looks Roger Dean, like Roger Dean there, but I don't believe he had a part in this, but uh, listen to what, so it's, it's a metal band that has a keyboard player, so, you know, that, that's a good sign, but Steinway Grand Piano, Yamaha CP70, Fender Rhodes, Harpsichord, Mini Moog, Micro Moog, Mini Moog, Micro Moog, Oberheim, OBX, uh, Roland, Yamaha, Clavinet, and Hammond B3. So, you know, if you've got Hammond B3 going on with some heavier guitars, that works for me. So, that's a pretty good album there. I, I like the sound of that. All right, next group is um, maybe between pro progressive rock, uh, between rock and fusion, or rock and jazz fusion. Um, excellent, excellent band. This is the Mahavishnu Orchestra. Um, and this first one is Between Nothingness and Eternity, which is a live album. It's not a great condition copy here. Um, pretty cool album cover there. But uh, So this is, you know, Billy Cobham, I believe, um, on drums, and phenomenal jazz drummer. Jan Hammer on uh, piano and Moog. Um, so this, again, a lot, this is kind of 
synth, it's got some synth in it and all, but it's kind of jazz fusion style prog. Really good stuff. Incredible, incredible musicianship. It's got a few from this band. Uh, this is a great, it's probably my favorite of theirs. Mahavishnu Orchestra, Birds of Fire. Birds of Fire on Columbia from 73. And the first one I showed you was, what year, 73 also. So, early 70s, fusion, you just know it's going to be good. Uh, the next one is Visions of the Emerald Beyond. Great album cover there. Visions of the Emerald Beyond. And that is from um, 75, Mahavishnu Orchestra. I know they had more albums out, those are the only ones that I have. Um, the next one I just got uh, a few weeks ago um, off of eBay, and I got it for pretty cheap, but uh, I was reading up on Patrick Moraz, who is the keyboard player, uh, he was a keyboard player on the Relayer album from Yes, did a phenomenal job, later on went on to play with the Moody Blues for a number of years. Um, but he did some solo work, The Story of I, which we'll see maybe in the next video, but um, before he played with Yes, he played in a group called Main Horse. And I heard a, I heard a uh, video on YouTube of Patrick Moraz solo playing a piece on piano and synthesizer, and it was amazing. And I said, man, I've got to find out what that is. And what it was, was a song on here. It's called um, More Tea Vicar. More T. Vicker, and boy, that's an, an amazing solo piece that he did. And turns out, so I looked it up and found out Patrick Moraz's first band after he, he left Switzerland and went to England, I believe, and hung out with guys and um, formed this group called Main Horse. But this is, a, um, I've only listened to it a little bit, not the entire thing so far, but uh, apparently this has got some amazing, amazing keyboard work on it. Um, it's, it's 1971. Prague, and uh, so Main Horse. If you see a copy of that around, and I've never seen that in that I can recall in any record store, so I don't think it's super easy to find. So, all right, the next band, um, kind of interesting, and I don't know the full history on them, but it's Manfred Mann's Earth Band, and Manfred Mann also had a group called Manfred Mann. Uh, Do A Diddy Diddy, I believe, was one of his earlier songs, but later on he formed a band that was progressive rock, um, and they were they were really good, really good stuff on here, excellent keyboard. This is, uh, this is uh, Solar Fire, Solar Fire from 1973 on Polydor, um, Manfred Mann, the keyboard player, he's an organ synthesizer and vocals, um, and I really like their sound. It's uh, it's a little different. Um, this is one. Uh, this is Man for Man's Earth Band, uh, the Good Earth. The Good Earth, and this is this is kind of quirky, kind of funny. Um, this album here, on the front of it here, in this red seal right here, red wax seal part, it says, the owner of this album is entitled to rights over one square foot of the earth, situated at some cryptic name starting with an L, in the county of Brecon, Wales, in the Great Britain, in Great Britain, subject to registration on or before 31st of December 1975. So, basically, you would write your name and address right here in the corner, you clip that off and send it in, and you would officially own one square foot of land. You'd get a deed that looked like this one here on the back cover, and then you would own a plot of land there. Uh, it says, in small print, this offer is limited to the extent of the total number of square feet available from the total plot of land described in the second schedule, blah, 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 blah. So apparently, I don't know, maybe they bought some amount of land and they're, you know, kind of quirky. I've never seen that before. I guess it's one way to get uh, fan involvement, but um, I think whoever owned this must have just listened to the music and passed up on the real estate. Alrighty, next one, um, Manfred Mann's Earth Band. You've probably seen this in the, in the stores. A really wild looking cover, The Roaring Silence. 
and I don't know much about this one. I don't think I've listened to this before. 1976. This is on bronze record, uh, bronze records. But 1976, uh, I bought a whole bunch of records from this guy named Bonsall here. And if I could do it again, he had written. Apparently, he had written his name on the front cover of almost all of them, which I didn't discover, sadly, till later. So. I'm trying to upgrade my Bonsall copies with better copies, but... Alright, this will be the last M, the last group we'll cover in this video, and uh, so we've gotten a little bit into the M's, and the next video we will finish up the M's, but um, Progressive Rock, of course, started uh, maybe in, it's debatable, but, you know, say 1969 within the Court of the Crimson King, or 67 with um, uh, Moody Blues, Days of Future Past, whatever you, whatever you want to say, but kind of died out in the mid to late 70s as punk came around, but kind of got a boost through the 80s. In the 80s, there were some groups that were putting out what they call maybe neo-progressive rock, which is maybe not the same as the rock that was in the early 70s, uh, you know, digital synthesizers more so than analog, but still longer songs, uh, well thought out songs, a um, little bit deeper lyrics than the standard pop music. So one of those groups that really kind of held the torch then was Marillion. And there's a lot of Marillion fans. This is the first Marillion effort, um, script for A Jester's Tear. That's a nice copy of that one. Um, that was 83. And I never really had heard Marillion until recently. I mean, I, I wasn't into them back then in the 80s. Um, and even when I got into progressive rock, I've kind of picked this up, you know, to, to try to get into and see what neo-prog neo is all about. But um, uh, the next one by Marillion, this is, a, this is a find from recently. This is a sealed copy, sealed promo copy, in fact, of the second Marillion album, classic uh, Misplaced Childhood. Um, excellent artwork on these. By the way, that's from 1985. 1985. So obviously, I haven't listened to this one yet. Haven't opened it, um, but mint copy of that one. So, okay. So that's uh, that's L through Marillion, Lake through Marillion. And so next video we will pick up with uh, whatever is next after Marillion and go through the end of the M. So there's some biggies coming up in there. Um, uh, certainly Moody Blues. Um, a bunch of Moody Blues albums. I'm trying to think what else we've got coming up. Um, actually, most of the next video will be Moody Blues. A lot of Moody Blues albums. but uh, A couple, couple cool ones in the next video. Some more Italian prog. Uh, reissue stuff that I've gotten, so stay tuned. Um, appreciate you guys watching. This has been a lot of fun, you know, just me and my vinyl and you guys, um, which is better than just me and my vinyl, which is kind of what it's been for a number of years. So uh, good to know that there's people out there that care and enjoy the videos, and I enjoy your guys' video, watching your videos too. Um, some incredible stuff that you guys have and have found, and I'm learning a lot about musical styles that I like. Um, so, vinyl community, it's a good thing. Keep making the videos. Um, tell your buddies about it. I'd, I'd like to get up to 100 subscribers if I can. Um, uh, but anyway, that's it. Be good. See you next video.